Hello, this is Tim Congdon, Chairman of the Institute of International Monetary Research at the University of Buckingham. This is early October and it's my monthly update on the international monetary situation. As always, I, I focus on a particular topic as well sometimes as re reviewing what's happening to the quantity of money in the main industrial economies. In this particular occasion, I want to focus on bond markets and interest rate movements. And I'll start off with the United States and indeed with a story that appeared in the Daily Telegraph on the 5th of October. This is a very provocative piece by Ambrose Evans Pritchard where he points out that the Federal Reserve has been raising interest rates to head off inflation and the, of course the Federal Reserve acts on very short-term rates, the so-called Fed funds rate, which is the rate for lending between the banks. But there is also bonds that are issued with redemption six months, 18 months, three years, 10 years and so on in prospect. And the most important of these, symbolically, is the 10-year Treasury bond yield, the yield on the bonds issued by the American government with 10 years to go. Now, just once two years ago now, July 2016, the yield on this 10-year Treasury has got down to 1.5%. It's now 3.2% and rising. So US Treasury yields, the most sort of iconic symbolic of these, has more than doubled in little more than two years. And so Ambrose conjectured that if there are more of these Fed rate rises, there's going to be what he called a bond market debt meltdown. Very sort of provocative phrase. Well, just to understand what's going on here, the price, the value of bonds moves inversely with the yield. So roughly speaking, if you had a very long dated bond, indeed in the extreme case an undated bond, if the yield doubles, the value halves. Okay. So what could be meant by this phrase, a debt meltdown, is a collapse in the value of bonds. Government bonds, corporate bonds, bonds issued by the World Bank, supranational bonds, all these bond markets could see a collapse in value because of rising yields. So there's one of the bad effects is the losses to the investors, to the bondholders. But there's a further aspect to this because there's a kickback to the government finances. You see, obviously, when the government has to pay only 1.5% on its borrowings, it can have large debts, large deficits, and still be solvent. But suppose that the yield rises from 1.5% to 3.2, to 5.2, to 7.2, then you know, large debt, massive deficits, they imply that the cost, the debt interest on the national debt would be rising. That itself is part of public spending. Public spending is rising faster than the tax revenues. The budget deficit is rising faster. The debt is rising faster and eventually risk an explosion in public debt. Now, this may sound a little bit at the top, a little bit hysterical, but it's happened. It happened in the case of Greece between 2009 and 2012. In 2006, 2007, the yield on Greek government bonds was very similar to that on German government bonds. But then in 2012, it moved out briefly to 30% and Greece was completely bust. So the 
Movements in bond markets matter because of the potential losses and profits too if yields are falling to the investors, but also because of the link to government finances. Then of course there's also the effect, in the case of corporate bonds and bonds issued by developing country governments, of the, the effect of the higher bond yields on the cost of servicing the debt, which of course the higher the cost the less investment by companies and so on. So that's another effect to bear in mind. I don't want to downplay the importance of this subject. Let's just be clear about that. And it has to be said that interest rates have been very low for the last 10 years. Bond yields have been extraordinarily low for about the last 10 years. And this movement back towards 3% plus is, in my view, overdue and quite sensible. It used to be thought, if you go back to the 19th century and much of the 20th century, that the lowest yield on government bonds in an era of price stability would be about 3%. That was what was the usual understanding by most bond investors with a sense of history. Perhaps 2% in the real extreme cases, but what's happened in the last 10 years is they've actually had the yield on bonds lower than the inflation rate for extended periods, and the inflation-adjusted bonds issued by governments actually having negative yields, negative real yields. So a return to, as I say, 3, 4, 5% on government bonds, the government bond yields, in the context of inflation of 1, 2, 3% would actually be quite normal. I also want to point out that, so in a sense, what's happening is a shift from the very abnormally low bond yields of the last few years to something much more logical and, and rational, in my view. I also want to point out, and this is perhaps more of a surprise to those people who don't haven't thought back over 40 or 50 years, that what's happening at the moment is a very minor movement compared with what's happened historically. Let's look at a chart of US Treasury bond yield going back to the early 1950s. Now, you can see at this chart that in the very early 1950s, the 10-year yield in America was 2% or so. And then over the next 30 years, it rose to what? It rose to over 15%. 15% 15 in 1981. By the way, my own career as an economist started in the city, started uh, in 1976. And I remember visiting America at that time and talking about the bond market and would yields go even higher than that. That, bond, that, that <laughs> debt meltdown wasn't from one 0.5% to 3.2, it's happened in the last two years, it was from 2 to 15. And let's also be clear that on average, since the early 1950s, bond yields have been much higher than 3.2%. You can see this in this further chart where I've just simply put the 3.2% as, as the red line at the bottom. You can see it. Most of the time, you can see that the yields have been much higher than that. So. I might finally just say one or two things about the UK, where we also had this dramatic debt meltdown in the inflationary decades from the 1950s through to the 1980s. Right at the start of the post-war period, we had an undated government bond called Consuls, Consolidated Stock. That name goes back actually to the 18th century when uh, in the 1750s a chance to the had consolidated all the different government debts at that time and as consoles, undated stock with an, an unbroken history of 250 years. Now, 19th century, much the time, 3%, 4%. 1990s got down towards 2%. And then we look at what happened in the 1950s, 60s and 70s. And when I started to work as an economist in the City of London in 1976, the value of consuls, instead of being 
yield being 2% and the value being or 2.5%, two, two whatever the figure was, and the value of the bond being 100, the yield was 17% and the price was 16. So you'd held this piece of paper back over that period of time from, say, 1946 to 1976. The value in money terms would have dropped from 100 to something under 20. You lost over 80% of your money. Sounds pretty bad, and it was pretty bad. But I'm afraid that wasn't all of it either, because in fact, the value of a pound in 1976 was much less than the value of a pound in 1946. So you'd lost over 80% the nominal value. The nominal value had been wiped out by the fall in the value of money. This was a scandal. My point here is simply this, that this was a, a far worse debt meltdown than has happened the last couple of years in the United States. And nobody really expects the kind of movement we saw in America and in Britain in the 50s, 60s and 70s again. We don't expect that kind of to happen again. But it did happen. You know, massive losses to, to bondholders in that generation. It was shocking. It was a scandal. It was outrageous. Yeah. But many economists just shrugged their shoulders and said, well, it's rich people held these bonds and they were made poorer by it. So what? Compared with what happened in that 30 years up to the late 1970s, early 1980s, what's happened in the last couple of years is quite minor. And I think before we get too excited about this debt meltdown, we need to put it into context. It's very important to remember that investors have got equities, real estate and other assets as well. And so in that period, 50s, 60s, 70s, yes, the bondholders were wiped out, but other investors did very well and life went on. Thank you.